So one thought I've been having lately is about the silliness of guilt um, from a divine perspective. Because from this divine perspective, the sense I'm getting is that everything is utterly co-created and co-experienced by all. So, to use an example that may be a little misleading at first, when you go to a restaurant and you sit down and the waiter comes to take your order, you and the waiter are equally co-creating the experience. You can look at the experience the way, say, a camera in the corner of the restaurant may be looking at it, seeing all of you together, seeing all your various activities and interactions. But the trippy part is the waiter is also creating your experience of sitting down in the chair and ordering the meal. You are also co-creating the experience of the waiter standing beside you, taking down your order. And what's interesting about this is obviously the waiter doesn't really know what you're going to order because that's in your brain, your private circuited mind. And you don't know necessarily what the waiter's thinking because the waiter also has a brain, a privately circuited um, channel for mind. But on the ultimate level, the level on which this manifested part is being created, it's all one. And so, for example, if you have a, a thought about the waiter that you feel guilty about, a judgmental thought, say, well, let's say you treat the mayor, or the uh, waiter rudely. What's, what's ironic about it and kind of silly about feeling guilty about it is that the waiter created that experience just as much as you did. The waiter created the experience of the person ordering the food, right, in this scenario, you, insulting the waiter either through action or, you know, in a judgment. And this is where the difference between guilt and contrition, I think, gets um, illustrated. Guilt is silly because if you're going to judge yourself to be a bad person or a bad thing based on that, it's actually disregarding and disempowering the co-creation of the waiter. You're going to go around and feel like, oh, I'm some terrible thing. The waiter's sitting here laughing going, dude, we made that experience together. The contrition part of it, though, is where you then get to fully acknowledge the embodied experience because you recognize on a person-to-person level, right, the harm that being disrespectful to someone can cause, both to the person who's doing the disrespecting and to the person who's disrespected. And so the contrition is kind of a mutual purging or at least a purging for the contrite person to recognize. I mean, I think on a deep level, the, what it is, it's like, that's not cool. It's like, it's just not cool to treat someone else that way. It's just not cool. Um, you could think of it as not kind, not considerate, not respectful. You wouldn't want to be treated that way, right? The golden rule. And it's kind of this recognition that when we're in our fully incarnated in selves, when we're manifested here in this seemingly finite realm, Things have consequences. Things are real. You don't get to do things over. And what you do can create wounds or even scars in others. And contrition is the way we avoid taking on the illusion of guilt while simultaneously not denying the harm we've caused. We say, I'm not going to feel guilty. I'm not going to make some judgment on myself or some other person, labeling them bad, right? Branding them with the scarlet letter. I'm also not going to sit here and just say, well, the waiter co-created the experience anyway, sucks for him. I just gave him a shitty tip. I treated him rudely and left him in pain. Um, Too bad you co-created that. Contrition is what allows us in the finite level to acknowledge our mutual shared experience of pain and suffering and to acknowledge our regret for having caused it. But then we avoid that trap of guilt, which is just a poison for the mind, which is really silly and acts as a way to keep us in disbelief of the ultimate fact, which is co-creation and co-experience in all.